Hi Yet Crafters, Amy here, and today I have a simple raised die cut encouragement card to share with you today. Now here I'm showing you the panel. I had actually made this in a previous video. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. But I have this new to me Sending Smiles die from Simon Says Stamp. I have some adhesive backed foam in this gorgeous blue color. And I have an A2 size card base. Now here's a photo of the finished card. You can see it's very simple in design, but it has a lot of dimension with that die cut. So I'm going to show you how I did it. Now first off, I cut down the panel with the stitched edge rectangle dies. And you can see it makes it a little bit smaller than A2 size. And that's an A2 size card base of 110 pound cardstock. And I'm just lining it up in the center, um, the die, and I'm holding it down with some low tack tape here and I'm going to run it off screen through my die cutting machine. Now I'm centering it because I'm actually going to be using that panel as is and then popping the sentiment that I die cut out back into it but I'm going to do it with some dimension as you saw in the photo. So I'm careful to line this up on the finished panel and then I carefully remove the low tack adhesive and the die and I want to keep all these little innards. You want to keep all the little pieces inside the E's and the S and all those little pieces parts because you're going to kind of um, puzzle piece them back into the design. Now I'm going to cut the same thing out in this adhesive backed foam but I'm going to leave it kind of in its place while I attach it to the die cut panel piece. Now this just makes it easier to line up. You can absolutely pop it out and do it that way if you want, but since this is a bit of a delicate um, die cut, I wanted to just kind of leave it in the whole sheet of foam tape just so that it didn't kind of get warped and make it harder to do this process. Um, obviously it's easier when you have um, a thicker die, so I wasn't entirely sure how this was going to work. This was literally my first time ever touching this die, so I was a little bit nervous, but um, as you saw, we made it work. So I'm just carefully pulling out this die, again, not to mar the panel at all because I'm going to be using all of it. Um, and I'm keeping all these little pieces that I'm poking out because I'm going to need those as well. So basically be mindful to keep keep place of everything that you're you're cutting out here. And now I'm just lining up that piece of the panel and putting it directly on the foam. And then I'm going to use an acrylic block to hold it down and let that kind of set. Now this panel I actually made in a previous video. I'll link that in the video description box if you want to see how I made it. But I was basically watercoloring with my Catherine Pooler ink pads. Now Catherine Pooler is dye ink, but it's water reactive. So I kind of just smushed it down onto my glass mat and did some simple rainbow watercoloring with it. But I had all this extra gorgeous pigment that I didn't want to waste. So I did the smushing technique where basically you just smush the paper right down into it. Now this panel is actually uh, Strathmore Bristol Smooth and it allows it to kind of really move around because there's a bit of a clear coating on the paper. So I basically just used the residual ink kind of spritzed with some water and some Perfect Pearl mixed into the water and it created this gorgeous simple shimmery background. So that's where this panel came from. And now I'm just carefully trying to pop this out. And this took a little bit of time, I'm not going to lie, guys. This, this would be a lot easier with a, with a die cut with some heft. But, you know, go big or go home, right? So I'm just kind of carefully pulling that out. And then using my pokey tool to kind of poke out the center bits um, in the E's and the D and all the other little parts. Now, you don't need to keep those parts, um, but I did keep the little the little heart cut out, which is optional inside the G. So now basically I can pull that backer off and then I'm going to inlay it back into that opening on my card base. So I've got the card panel attached down and you may have seen when I was gluing the back of the panel, I did put some liquid glue just on the little bits in between the letters just because I, it was kind of delicate and I didn't want to risk ripping it with my tape runner. So I'm just kind of carefully inlaying that back in and you can see now all the white holes in between the D and the G um, and all the letters. So that's where all these little pieces parts come in. So I'm just going to put in some liquid glue and use my jewel picker, jewel picker tool and then just kind of pick up these pieces 
just like a puzzle and fit them back into the spaces. So it took me a minute to remember <laughs> which one was which, but we got it sorted and I pushed them back in with the pokey side of that jewel picker tool. And then that basically gives you a nice continuous design because you're not missing any little parts from the panel that you cut into. So I'm just taking my time, pushing those back in, and it's, you know, it's a little fiddly, but it was kind of therapeutic and fun, not something I, I do very often. So I'm just kind of putting these pieces back in. Maybe if you have round ones like this, be mindful of your design to make sure you get the correct uh, circle piece in the correct letter. But just going in with my Barely Art glue here and just piecing in these little bits and pushing them right down um, in between the, the little foam cutout. And then the G, I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to do there, but I knew that I wanted to um, take advantage of that adorable little heart that cuts out on the die. So I end up taking the little blue foam bit and removing the backer there and then just nestling that in the hole. Um, and I considered leaving it blue just because it's kind of different and kind of stood out a little bit, but I did ultimately end up going back and taking the smushed ink panel and kind of gluing that back on top of it. I considered putting that one in there, in the D, so different options, different ways you can play with it. Again, the heart is totally optional because it does just cut out the G normally, so if you don't want to use that, you could just kind of piece all of it back in there and not use the G. So I'm just putting a little dollop of glue back on top of that um, blue foam heart and struggling with my clogged bottle here <laughs> trying to get some glue out but I do put that little heart on top of it and that's going to finish this portion of it but it just gave it such a cool raised inlay look to it so here I have these little um, little blingage they're little um, they're kind of like sequins but they don't have the holes in them I would get them in my orders from the rabbit hole designs so they'll send you these little freebies and that's where these are from but the colors were just perfect and matched so well um, with the colors that I used on the panel so I just put some little blobs of glue down and have my jewel picker again and I'm going in odd numbers like I always do so three on one side and two on the other and that's going to finish my card. So very simple in design, but not lacking in the wow factor. And it was a fun way to use up this bonus panel. So if you want to see how I made the panel, I will link that um, below if you want to check that video out next. But you, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. And I'll check you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.